analyst, Leslie Sanchez. Good morning, ladies. Nice to see you. Leslie, uh, let me start with you and, and Michelle Bachman and her, you know, right up there on the top, just below, one point below uh, uh, Mitt Romney. What's Team Romney thinking about that this morning? <laughs> well, I think a lot of people understand that this was expected after the, after the New Hampshire debate. She did a very good job. She resonated, especially in a lot of her positions. And people were taking a first look in many ways at her candidacy. It's very early in what we call the invisible primary. People lining up, their grassroots supporters, their fundraisers. The question is, can she stand the test of time? Does she have the discipline to move a national campaign forward? It's very exciting for her right now, but it's a very long haul to get to next November. Yeah, Hillary, let's talk about that discipline. It's something that she's shown more of um, since she, you know, she hired Ed Rollins, or he's advising the, the campaign. He's something he said that he was gonna put some discipline in the show that she knows what she's talking about. Is it working? Well, she has good taste in political um, directors. Ed Rollins is <laughs> a great guy, former CNN colleague. That's right. But, um, here's the thing. I think, actually, Iowa, the surprise for me is Mitt Romney, because Iowa's traditionally been a state where the, the most uh, conservative extreme candidates tend to do better, and Mitt Romney had decided he was going to skip Iowa. So um, it's actually good news for him. I think, you know, the issue, So it, and not surprising at all that Michelle Bachman is doing well, because she's been willing to be the most extreme of all candidates. And that's, that's, I think, the issue that's not going to survive very well. Traditionally, in Republican primaries, Iowa ends up nominating the most extreme candidate, and then everybody goes to New Hampshire, and, and people get slapped around and, and brought back to kind of the center right. Um, and, and Michelle Bachman wants to, you know, she said the other day she wants to repeal the Environmental Protection Agency, just shut down the agency. You know, I think Americans actually kind of like safe drinking water. You know, let's let's not discount one big aspect that she <clears throat> brings, and, and that is the, the appeal that she has for a lot of the Tea Party voters, a lot of the independent voters. She energizes, in many ways, that constituency, gets them engaged early in the process, and they're going to ride that wave all the way through. These are important ideas she's talking me, about. Well, I don't, I don't know so much about the ideas, but I do think she's energizing, and, I, and, and she's charismatic. The other fun thing this week to watch in, in Iowa, of course, is that just like Sarah Palin stepped on Mitt Romney's announcement right. by going up to New Hampshire, Sarah Palin's now going to Iowa to cut Ladies, short is that a Michelle Bachman's honeymoon. Is that a coincidence? Because in Pella, <laughs> Iowa, they're going to have the. You know, maybe once about it's a coincidence. It's been on the calendar for once a long time. Once it's a coincidence, time. twice, it's just hard to say, you know? It, that press release went out months ago. I think people have known that movie's coming, um, that there's a lot of excitement about Palin in Iowa. I don't think that's new news. It's just Iowa's getting all the attention like it does this time of year. I, know, I just think the that's next wrong. year we'll I be think talking Sarah Palin can't stand it when other people are getting too much attention. <laughs> Well, do you wants think wants everyone that, to be begging. Do you think, but then is she going to run? Do you think she runs, Hillary? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> what do you think, Leslie? How, it'll be so exciting if she does. I wrote a whole book, and I still have yet to decide, uh, you know, try to, to read into the mind of, of Sarah Palin. I think she has a lot of positives. She has to get serious about this race. Right now, it's a lot more celebrity in the Sarah Palin as a celebrity than it is as a candidate, and I think people, uh, serious people in, in politics recognize All that. Right, we got We're waiting to see. We got months to go before that is decided, but we don't have months mm -hmm. to go before the debt ceiling uh, comes, hits us right smack right. in the face uh, in about five weeks. Um, Hillary, is it right that the president is, is trying to show some leadership on this, and um, you know, do you think that he can push the ball forward on, on, um, on tax increases? You know, I think that the, the country has um, kind of brinksmanship fatigue, and uh, President Obama has, is, was the grown-up in the room when it came to um, the budget and, and keeping the government open, and he got uh, finally the support of uh, Republicans. And I think John Boehner is, is really the test over the next couple of weeks. Is he going to cave into the kind of silly rhetoric, frankly, of Michelle Bachman and um, some of her followers and friends in the House that are, that are saying, oh, well, just forget about this August 2nd deadline. No. Nothing's going to happen. Don't worry about the country's debt. You know, we're, they're just lying to you about the, Leslie, the seriousness of this issue. And you know, I think I, that, that I, John I think Boehner overall, really has the big <laughs> test here, not necessarily the president. I, I think what's very interesting here is that I agree on one part, there is gamemanship fatigue. If you look at the vast middle, people that are not directly aligned with Republicans or Democrats and wearing the jersey, the big partisans, they fundamentally understand they gave the benefit of the doubt in many ways to the okay. president 
for his leadership and feel that he has not got the economy moving, especially on this debt issue. I think the Republicans are strong. They're standing strong on not allowing a blanket vote of just raising the ceiling without significant cuts and looking at a balanced budget amendment. People want reasonable solutions and Republicans and Democrats to come together to do that. And I think the onus is on the president and the Democratic right. leadership to show that effort. Guys, we have less than a minute. I want to get both your thoughts on the New York uh, uh, same-sex marriage vote. Um, first of all, does this play out for other states, Hillary? And is this an important issue um, in the general election, do you think, in 2012? Is it somehow going to play? Well, it's important in other states. You know, the fact that New York now has marriage equality means that it doubled the amount of people in this country who, who can um, now marry from like something like 16 million to over 30 million. Um, but the, the real issue, I think, is that people want conviction. And I, I think the president, you know, evolving on this issue is not going to fly very long. No. I think that he can survive and thrive by coming out in favor of marriage equality and then get back to fixing the economy. That's yeah. what people really want him to focus on. But people generally, the, you know, the polls on this are going much more um, towards marriage equality. And this is really, well, I think, are, a generational the, the polls issue. polls seem to be evolving, too. And definitely the younger voters um, tend to be more in favor. Leslie, just quickly, I mean, do you think this is an issue for the general election? I think it's just an issue more so, um, to Hillary's point, for the, for the president, the president campaigned on this issue. Right. When you have single issue voters who are that excited about something, he has to deliver. He can't, I mean, to, to say, trust me, I'll do it later, is really difficult, not only for this issue, but many other constituencies that are watching. All Does right. he keep his word? Leslie Sanchez, Hillary Rosen, thank you so much. 19 thank minutes you. after the hour.